Hello, this is Vivian in South Carolina. Today is Saturday, July 30th. I had tried all this week making short little videos to edit together and I found myself repeating uh, a lot of the same information and needed way too much editing. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll try to just do one video real quick. This is the purse lane that I bought at Lowe's and I wanted to show it in comparison to the purse lane I've got gr that grew wild. And I bought this before I knew I had wild purse lane. So, um, the blooms are much fuller. They have more of these, um, are they called petals on the flower? Anyway, and the leaves are definitely way smaller, but they, they feel thick and soft. They're, they do feel like a succulent and they are prettier. The blooms are, you know, I've got d different colors here and got some yellow and pink in another um, container. But uh, I think I'm going to stick to the wild ones. And here's the wild purslane. Not at its prettiest. It's not blooming right now. In fact, I think they're going to seed, which is what I want. A friend of asked for some seed. She probably has some growing in her um, flower beds already, not realizing. But that's fine. I better collect some of these before they all drop off. But look at that. See how that's picking it up. But there's some seeds right there. Whoops. Isn't that something? We're not as impressed with the pulperillas as much as we are with the uh, green kind. And these both need to be repotted but I do like making tea with the green kind the flavor is about the same for both maybe a little bit stronger with the green but I'm gonna go ahead and harvest out all of the purples except for maybe one or two plants which I'm gonna let go to seed so I can have seeds to uh, share later this year but I'm drying these all out in fact right now I've got my dehydrator loaded with uh, lemon balm and sage that I'm drying out too Again, I'm probably shared already in another video. These are the figs. That one's grown nice and tall. But these are all the ones I followed the directions on how to um, propagate figs. The ones that I just stuck. Oh my gosh, there's even figs on that one. Look at that. What are they? That is just crazy. I did not notice that earlier. This is wild. I did not expect any figs on from any of these, but these I I didn't cut down to the eight or ten inches or so, whatever it was said. I had left the leaves on it. These were mainly the tips of the cuttings I took, and they still had leaves, and some even had figs on them when I did this. But look at them. This is fantastic. I can't believe I've got figs in pots. Look at this one. This is this is a nice tree. This is a twenty. No, this is a forty dollar tree. The smaller ones in the other things are $20 trees. But this size, already bearing fruit. Goodness, I can't wait for the fall and get these transplanted. The kiwis are coming along fine. But I need to wait for them to flower before I can get them planted. So just waiting on that. Ben has gotten so thrilled with the garden. He's actually becoming a gardener, coming out here watering. Uh, telling me how I should be doing things. <laughs> I'm trying to listen and then I try to explain to him why I'm doing what I'm doing the way I'm doing it. But look at these. Look at that. Look at the size. Oh, this is going to be ripe in the next day or so. we got to keep an eye on that. And of course I'm going to let some get overly big to make seeds. And over here we got more growing in there. Lots of little ones developing. It's so exciting. This is just in water in a bucket. I probably got, yep there's mosquito larva in there. So that's got to come out. Mosquitoes are really bad here as it is. I don't need to help them. But this has been in there. I was going to put dirt in there, 
and use this as a grain filler and they decided to continue living. These are very hardy plants. Look at that. Developing roots all over. Mosquitoes. And they are growing uh, profusely. And here I meant, I didn't mean, mean for the potato plant to survive. I just wanted to, to compost in place in the bucket and to take up room because I was running low on compost. But here it's um, thriving. It's probably developing some potatoes down there. That's the thing about potatoes. You just don't, you just have to have faith that it's down there and hope. But um, I'm going to harvest most of these plants, the perilla plants, and make tea. But uh, I'll leave the potatoes growing in that and repot other stuff into the various um, containers that the, perilla, the purple perillas are in right now. But check out how big the potato leaves are. Now these are edible. They, uh, they need to be steamed. I'm not sure. They probably, they may be able to be eaten raw, but I, I've never done that. Uh, and when they're steamed, they're used as uh, wraps, rice, and then some sort of you know kimchi or hot sauce or whatever you like, meat um, wrapped in it and then eaten as little bundles, Korean tacos or burritos. And uh, the stems are also edible, and I will be harvesting these because they're going really, really crazy. The poison ivy is probably dead now. But the salt is still there. It's still going to kill off whatever's trying to live there. And it's, uh, I think it's hurting one of the sweet gums down below, but I'm not worried about it. It's going to be cut down anyway. But again, more leaves, more stems. Look how tall the stems are over there. And if, uh, if it feels thick, you can peel the skin off to make it more tender. And it's just uh, cooked and eaten, just like you would do green beans. You know, that's a good way to start start out with this to make it something familiar. But then, you know, we like to do garlic and soy sauce and onions and things like that, and make it a like a banchan that you serve uh, as a side dish to rice. Now we only have about seven producing okra plants, uh, even though we've got a whole bunch uh, in containers, but these, I, I didn't really check on them for like a day. I, I, they were some pods developing and they grew to 10 inches long. I'll insert a picture here of um, what we harvested the other day. And then my husband came out and harvested some more today. And I like eating them raw. If you've never tried them raw, uh, give them a try. It's very refreshing. It's light, but I also like to roast them. I'll make a video about that when I have enough to roast them. <laughs> but uh, it's something that we got to keep an eye on, and we're not getting a big harvest at one time. They're more like a snack right now, which is great. I'm not complaining. It's a good snack. So, uh, and don't be wearing shorts if you're ever in an okra field. These, it's very irritating on the skin, and definitely have something to clip the uh, okra off with but I've got more blooms developing at the top Let's see that right here so and the, all the plants are doing that so hopefully we'll get a nice little harvest soon and the two melons on this plant are doing something wonky there they look like a squash but hopefully, you know, they'll, they'll develop into something edible. Now the watermelons are, I think, turning my husband into a uh, gardener. He's, he's cutting in, uh, he's always enjoyed the fruits of my labor, but always kind of like, you know, what's the point? And something has changed, something has clicked for him, and he is really enjoying coming out here, and he's taken over some of the watering from me, which is fine. Uh, it's almost meditative if you've never just did that and just let everything else go. Just walk around, water the plants, check them out, and just be awed by just seeing things grow and develop. But 
this is what started it and I'm excited but earlier this week I came out here and there was a, about a five to six inch long little snake my husband was out here and I screamed for him he came over he, he wasn't able to catch it and he didn't want to risk because uh, he thought it might have been a venomous snake it would look like a newly hatched one and it was quick so hopefully it was just a, a racer and not something venomous but it got away and I just have to be extra careful my husband has uh, put um, some old hay around some of the plants that aren't some of the the ones that are doing better have a lot of leaves right there and and it's shading the root system so he's done that uh, to help them from drying out so fast because even though we're watering them once sometimes even twice a day it doesn't feel like it's enough really needed it in fact a lot of the root was exposed and I put some more um, compost uh, mixed with clay I'll talk about that a little bit later but and then he put the straw on top of that this one wasn't drying out as fast because it has nice foliage inside in fact I thought that this was the one that I was going to lose when I transplanted and this one did better than the rest and it has a nice size one there and the okras these are growing well but the other ones that aren't doing well I may just go ahead and pull them out so they're not competing with the watermelon roots empty pots aren't exciting but these three have papayas seeds uh, on sort of picture of what I planted but uh, it was kind of interesting and I'm not in the right zone for them so they will need to be protected during the winter but we'll see thought I'd give it a try global warming and all you know the chestnut trees are doing great I hadn't lost uh, I think no, I hadn't lost any of them. The two I thought I was going to lose uh, are making a nice comeback. So I think I got that uh, taken care of. So I'm going to have plenty of these to put out and uh, give away and sell. I'm moving the, the wall over about a foot or so. And trying to get the roots... Um, the babies rooted. I saw something. Hang on. You see the lizard? I didn't see that leaf. I saw a tail. It looked like a snake. It's like ugh, freaking out. Anyway, they're profusely making baby plants. Like here's one right there. I hadn't started having root buds, but they they come out pretty soon, especially if they get wet, uh, moistened well. So. I'm shuffling them over, restacking them, and rooting, rooting some, and that may become a something I do every other week or so. Because I, I want a lot of strawberry plants, and I plan on put, building an A-frame to overwinter them in. Uh, just cover it with, uh, do another A-frame like I did in the chicken coop, but I cover that with plastic and not have it all the, you know that high because I don't need it that high maybe about four foot or something so should be interesting two surviving ginger plants from all the ones I started last year because I didn't overwinter them right and most of them died so here they are only two that succeeded just as I was grieving over not having enough uh, mulch and I've got acres and acres of mulch uh, that I didn't realize I was very slow I was also I'm also slow about another blessing I've got in abundance over here is clay now I can't grow in the clay but I've got mounds that are loose and soft that I can access and what I did was mix it uh, two parts compost to one part clay and mix it up and I want to show you the difference. The ones over here were transplanted earlier into the same buckets. I didn't transplant them out and because um, I ran out of these bigger buckets and had to use the one gallon buckets for a lot of them. And 
they just have the compost, the ones over there. The ones with the sprouts, the spouts, the poor spouts of the buckets pouring, uh, pointing away from the center of where the water waterer is, I um, mix clay into them. You can see some of it's just on top dressing that I just kind of brushed in and had to do. And most of them were just transplanted out of the one gallon buckets. So I try to keep the one gallon um, ball intact and put the clay around it. And these plants were the smaller plants. And now they've gotten bigger than the ones that were transplanted earlier in the same size container uh, at least two weeks before they were. So the clay is definitely, it's loaded with nutrients, but plants, most plants can't grow in it unless they're a really sturdy weed. Most of them it's weed. The jasmine doesn't seem to have a problem here. But I'm now mixing my compost with uh, clay. And, you know, because I, I heard about rock dust. I wanted to order rock dust. I had a hard time mail ordering rock dust. I just didn't want to do it. It bothered me. And here I was with all the stuff here. And, you know, clay is abundant here. This is the only surviving Cherokee purple that I've got. That's the one, the sucker that I tore off of the plant and just stuck it in the in the uh, compost bucket. And I've pretty much given up on them. I'm still watering some on the back, the tool, the black from Tula, I believe. But um, this is not working out. It just got too hot up here, I think. So anyway, the eggplants are also getting too hot in their buckets and getting regular watering. The sunflowers definitely seem to be doing well but they need uh, hand watering. The water system over here is not working very well and I went ahead it's, it won't turn off completely so I just went ahead and have it dripping into that one so that one's getting a little extra water. As I mentioned earlier I've got a bunch of sage harvested and drying in the dehydrator and a bunch of lemon balm and I still got more to do and I need to do some of the stevia and the rosemary will keep I got plenty of rosemary and I like just coming out here and getting them it's time for me to cut the water on for the potatoes the red potatoes are a fail they all died so I'm reusing the compost and getting this down to where I can uh, lift the whole thing up. But even at less than half filled, I can't pull that up. And I'm not going to risk my back. I've already injured it once this week. I just have to show you. Even This is um, the big container. It's got three that I planted in here on purpose. And then some I just tossed to the side of it that survived. But it's got several. There. That's five. Little, one that's about half that size over there, and several little ones being developed over here. It's, they seem to like the company of another plant, maybe. So, because uh, even if um, I, I was trying to figure out how many I'm going to get from each one, and uh, you know. I can't help it. I know I shouldn't do it, but figuring out what grows, you know, how how things grow uh, compared to different methods is always something good to check out. But this way, see, so yeah, look at that. And then there's little small ones, but just this is exciting to me. This is all the excitement I need. I don't need scares. I don't need fancy whatevers this is this makes me happy see the praying mantis it's been there all day neat creatures this may be my only surviving fig tree that I planted this year actually planted um, around the property and its leaves were turning yellow and I did some stuff and hopefully that's uh, helping it recover it's, it's uh, not as yellow as it used to be those leaves have gone but I also want to show you another beneficial 
You see her? Isn't she a beaut? Huge. That's um, from her head to her tail. It's over an inch. And right there is an egg sac. Isn't that cool? I don't mind them. I, I like spiders like them as long as they don't um, build their webs in a, you know, some place I have to move things through on a regular basis. I'd like to let, let them be in something like this. She can stay there until winter. This is our salad garden and it's right next to the door that we normally go in and out of. And yeah, you're not supposed to grow lettuces in July and August, but I am. And I planted spinach. Only two of them I think came up. The rest of grass. But I'm going to plant another thing of mixed lettuces. But I prefer to do something like spinach, something a little bit more nutrient dense. But to collect these, you know, you just um, get them as babies. And they're already starting to bolt some. But that's not a big problem. But these, it's nice and it's much cheaper for a seed packet than one of those organic um, containers of lettuces. So I'm definitely going to do this method. And I like to set this up for my mom so she doesn't have to uh, go down. This is on a table. So this is at table height for me. And this is just another easy method to garden even if you don't have a yard or you're renting there's no excuse you can have a garden just containers grandsons today how to harvest from the onion patch and he found it very enjoyable <laughs> but um, it's simple you just find the biggest one the one that has the most leaves and then from the outside in so this one he harvested one down at the bottom of this one and the next one will be that one to be harvested over here and then just you know you just look and see which one has the most leaves and you go from the outside in so whichever leaf is the furthest out then that's the one you get so I need to the seeds from the spring onions that I planted in in here when those two died and hasn't come up won't come up I don't know what I did wrong but I think I'll just get some more rooted green onions and and uh, plant those and here is my witch hazel see where I had, uh, earlier this year took out the uh, witch's hat aphids and here's the leaf still still hanging in there and they've turned a dark um, color they used to be you know bright green like this all over all the leaves but um, they turned dark. I had an interesting experience yesterday. I've already been attacked by fire ants and had my right hand really stung in several places. So when I was getting water yesterday and doing some things for the chickens, I felt another sting on my left hand, on the back of my hand. And I don't know if it'll pick up, but it's right there. So I'm not sure how much can't tell from the screen. Anyway, I felt something sting me and I thought it was another fire ant. I had to put stuff down and then I looked at the back of my hand and it wasn't a fire ant. I don't know what it was. I didn't have my glasses on. I can't see very well real close up. So I just kind of, you know, freaked out, screamed, swatted it off my hand and I came over here and I picked one of the younger, still light green leaves and I balled it up, just kind of twisted it up in my fingers like that and then I rubbed it against it um, where it, it it literally there's like a little hole left that's not normally a fire ant thing but it immediately worked the pain was gone the sting I was just like still freaking out about what the heck was it but it was like wow this stuff works and that's all I needed to do I didn't need to um because I was filthy I didn't want to go inside and um take take my boots off and all it just coming up to the plant and using it simple as that I didn't have to chew it and masticate it and spit it out and use it I just did you know rubbed it between my fingers and rubbed it onto the wound so anyway just something that I, I 
I think it's great if you've got a plant that can do that and maybe other plants will do that but something neutralized whatever it was and it bled normally um, stings just kind of swell up and you know fill up with um, pus and whatever but this was a totally different experience and um, but it didn't hurt it didn't it didn't flare up no other reaction except for the initial pain so I thought that was neat and share that with you that these plants are worth it and I just need to keep an eye on those aphids they're really freaky I don't want them here I started this uh, video with uh, plants that I bought uh, an ornamental uh, basically that may have an edible purpose and I uh, found out from a friend of mine who gave me, she gave me this container, she was moving and she wasn't going to take it, it has a matching bird bath and um, I said sure I'll take it and it had the plant in there already so um, it was by our garage not being watered, not being taken care of, it survived, I brought it up here and been watering it uh, she said it was called a wandering Jew and uh, it'd be neat, I hadn't looked up, you know, why is it called that and does it have any uses so and it's a pretty I like it that it again I like the purple perilla it has a color to it had these little flowers that bud up in the mornings that open up in the mornings and it has color without the flowers but it's kind of neat looking and my cilantro has gone to seed which is okay I'll, I'll plant some more I got more more packets but it's just kind of neat to have plants and learn about it. I am um, still finding out how ignorant and how much more I have to learn. And I look forward to it. Thanks for watching.